Hey guys, it's Eus, uh, one of the VP comms for Carleton University Debate and Speech. Recently, our Discord server, which we hold practices on, has gone through a little bit of a renovation. We've added a new feature, which basically makes you have to agree to our equity constitution before you can engage and like uh, interact with the rest of our server. Uh, it's a little bit of a stopgate. Um, and I've been asked to basically give a little tutorial on how to set something similar like that up so that other clubs and tournaments maybe have very similar structures where they can um, make people agree to rules or other uh, things of that nature before accessing the rest of the uh, server. So I'm going to give you a little tutorial of how to do that with the CUDS bot. Um, there are other bots that let you do role assignment, but I'm not going to cover those because there are other tutorials online. Uh, I'm sure you can just Google it. Um, this one's going to be specifically for the um, CUDS TD bot that um, I've made uh, because I don't think anyone else is going to be putting a tutorial on that soon. So um, basically the way the system works looks uh, like this. So this is the CUDS Discord server right now. Um, when you join it, you basically just see one channel. It's called Gatekeeper, and you can basically do nothing else. These are all individuals who haven't yet to agree to the um, to the equity uh, constitution. Basically, what happens is once you enter this channel, um, you have to react to this message that's given from the TD bot to be given a role which lets you interact with the rest of the server and be able to see it. So um, you have to be able to you just read the rules and whatnot and then um, you react to it and then boom, the rest of this uh, shows up. Um, the way that uh, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you guys how to get this done is by using a template that Joey from SMU, who is like now going to EDS, um, has set up for BP style tournaments. Um, he set up a little template for that, and I'll put the link for it in the description. I think it's pretty well made, um, so I think it'll be useful for people to know how to use um, how to use this feature for uh, templates similar to this. So I think that the first thing that I'm going to um, do is talk about the roles. Um, so if you go to server settings and you go to roles, Joey's already um, done the legwork to put in all of the roles that you'll basically need for a tournament. But I want to note a couple things. One, uh, the bot role, or if you don't have a bot role, this role for the TD bot needs to be above the role that you will be giving someone after like they click that button. So I'll show you what that means in a second if it's still not clear. Because basically what's going to happen is you everyone will start off when they join the server with an everyone role. They will have no roles, so they'll just be considered this everyone, right? Once you click that button, you will be given a role. It's up to you to decide what that role will look like and what permissions they'll have um, but they'll be given that role um, I guess it's better if I just start making it and then you guys can uh, model yours after what I do I guess so what I'm gonna do is go to the everyone tab and because everyone is not gonna be able to interact with the entire server I'm going to clear the permissions um, so basically they can't do anything what I just did is I made it another role, um, new role. I'm going to call it attendee. If you're doing a practice server, you might call it debater or whatever. Um, and it's fine. Whatever you guys uh, want to call it and the per permissions um, generally is also up to uh, the individuals running the server. It's up to you guys. Um, I personally just like to take off create invitation. I think everything else is pretty fine. Um, Actually, there is one role that I, I generally like to keep on. I like to change um, change change name tag. I like to keep that on even if you haven't uh, actually accepted the equity guidelines yet. I think that's pretty useful. Um, also, I want to point out um, there is a root a permission here to add reactions and some people may be questioning why I'm turning that off because this is reaction based right you have to accept the reaction to be able to continue onto the server the reason why you want to uncheck this is because this uh, permission actually restricts or allows people to add new 
additional emojis or reactions or whatever. It's not uh, restricting the ability to add on top of an existing emoji. So there's a check mark emoji. You can add on another check mark, but you can't add on a thumbs up if this is unreacted. So that's it's okay to have this um, off. So basically, uh, the bot must be above attendee. Um, it doesn't actually matter what order it is, as long as the bot is above attendee, um, your server should work fine. Otherwise, um, it'll not work as intended because you can't assign someone a role um, that is above your own and the bot won't be able to do the same. Um, that should be everything that's in the settings here. We'll actually return to that in a second when we are using the functionality for the bot. So now it's about time to start setting up the bot, but before that, uh, just going to go into your user settings and to go down to appearance if you go down to the bottom you can enable developer mode and this is actually very important you need to have this um, unlocked so that you can get some of the information to complete the function for the cuds bot i'll show you um, what it is in just a second um, but now it's time to set up the channel so this is the channel that you're going to be setting up the like check-in little notification where the reaction is going to be in. So you can call it whatever you want, but I like to call it gatekeeper just because that helps me remember what it actually does. Um, so you create the channel and there you have it. So let's get into the permissions for this channel. Basically what we're going to be changing here is the ability to read and read the history so that we can actually react to it so that we can actually acquire the roles for the everyone role. Um, so that we change that. If we look to um, this test person, you can now see the um, gatekeeper um, role. Um, now we uh, have to go back to the settings really quick so that we can get the ID for the attendee. This is something that's unique to the developer option in the settings. That's why we did it. Uh, ordinarily, you wouldn't be able to copy the IDs. This is done by right clicking. Um, this developer option gets lets the ability to copy IDs for people, for roles, for servers. It's very useful, um, but it specifically is useful for this function because you require the ID. Um, so now that we've copied it, what we can do is go over here, um, use the function to check in. Uh, you're going to put in the ID for the one that for the role that you will be like giving to people when you press on the emoji when you react to it. It's going to give this one. This is um, basically attendee one and then you're gonna put in the constitution I'm just gonna grab the guideline for equity that we have on the server thank you very much Arthur i um, just going to throw that in there and then we press enter then the TD bot gives you a fancy little reply you can delete this and then uh, note it also changes um, this little response here based on whatever the name is for the server so it'll customize it that way and then um, now you have a setup so when you click that you have the attendee role unclick it goes away that's what it looks like for uh, the test person as well when you click that boom but we're not done because you don't want to see the gatekeeper uh, channel anymore once you're an attendee because you don't want to give them the opportunity to unclick it, right? That'd be that'd be pretty bad. So what you're gonna do is go back into the permissions, set up a new one for attendee, and you're basically just gonna do the opposite. So you're gonna take away the ability to read. I'm gonna change that, save, and now you have it set up. Just doing a little bit of a cut here. Just wanted to show what it looks like after you've made those little changes to the attendee permissions so after you've pressed the check mark here you press check and then there you go so you you are able to see everything here but then the gatekeeper tab goes away so you're not able to um, revoke your um, your agreement with it's binding <laughs> soul bound okay thanks um, the only other thing that's worth noting is if you decide to change where the gatekeeper is or where the like message is, um, it is bound to one channel for every server, uh, but you can 
change it like if you go into the announcements and you try to do the same um, sorry I'm just gonna have to grab the ID again for the I'm just gonna put that in there copy ID so you copy the ID and then put in I don't know Apple whatever already in use so what you have to do in any channel just put in plus check in delete you've deleted it and now you can just throw in that command again and you set up another one also keep in mind that these commands are only able to be used by the people who have roles which are considered administrators so only admins can use this um, command so that's a little bit of a privacy thing I guess so that people who just show up to your tournaments don't just start setting uh, where the gatekeeper thing is um, so yeah that's basically how you set this up um, I'm sure there are other ways to possibly set this up that's more efficient maybe using the me the me six bot uh, I could put a link for that bot as well in the description but this is just the way that you'd set it up if you were using the TD bot uh, from cuds so yeah um, let me know if you have any questions, if you actually recommend any other ways that I've shown, and maybe it's a little bit more efficient. Maybe you can throw that in the comments if you guys want. But yeah, that's basically going to be it. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and um, happy debating.